All right then my friends, so now I'd like to talk about two more types and they are arrays and object literals. So the first type I want to talk about are arrays. So what I'm going to do is create a new variable called names and I want to give this the type of an array. Now when we give something the type of an array we use square brackets but also we have to specify what type of data is going to go inside the array. So for example that could be strings, it could be numbers, booleans, etc. So if I want to have an array of strings, I would type that by saying string and then square brackets, meaning a string array. And now this can only ever be an array with string values inside it. We can't put numbers inside it or booleans or anything like that, just strings. But that's okay because normally when we have an array of something, it is an array of data, which are all kind of like the same type. So it might be names like this, which are strings, or it could be an array of scores, which would be numbers or user objects or blog objects or something else. They would typically always be though, the same type as each other. So then, now this is defined as a string array and I could put some values inside this. So I could say something like Mario and then Luigi and oops, it needs to be in a string, Luigi and then Peach. But I couldn't add something like a number. If I do that, then I'm going to get an error under this. And that says the type number is not assignable to type string because we're saying all of these must be strings. All right, cool. So let's do a few more examples. So I'm going to come down here and create a new variable, this time called ages. And the type of this is going to be a number array. So to do that, we say number, then square brackets. And we can set this equal to an array with some numbers inside it. So I could say something like 25. 28, 24, but if I try to add some other type like a boolean, then it's not going to let me. We get an error because this must be an array of numbers now. All right, so we've defined those different arrays and we've given them some different values initially. And what I'd like to do is now try pushing new values onto these arrays. So I could take the names one, for example, and use the push method to push a new item onto the array. Now, if I try to do something that's not a string, I'm going to get an error because we've said this must be a string array. But if I try to push a string like Bowser, then everything is hunky dory. All right, let's do the same for the ages. I could say ages.push. And again, if I try to add something that's not a number, for example, a string like string version of 35, I'm going to get an error. And that error says argument of type string is not assignable to parameter of type number because this must be a number array. Let's change this to a number. So 35 and everything is fine. Awesome. So that's how we define these different array types using square brackets and then in front of those square brackets, the type of data inside them. Now TypeScript can also infer the values inside arrays as well. Much like if we had a variable like my name and set it equal to a string, which was Mario, and it would infer the type to be a string, it can infer the type inside arrays as well. So let me get rid of that and instead say let fruits equal to an array. And inside here, we'll say something like apples, uh, pears, and bananas. Oops, can I spell it? Bananas. And then we'll do one more, mangoes. All right, so now if we hover over this fruits variable right here, you're gonna see the inferred type. It's a string array. So it's looked at the values inside this array and said, okay, it's a string array because it's full of strings. Therefore, I will infer that type to be a string array. And now if I try to say something like fruits dot push, and then I don't know, true, which is not a string, then we're going to get an error because it must be a string. However, I could push on another string, for example, peaches, and this would be fine. All right. Okay. So let me do one more example here. I'm going to say const F that stands for a single fruit is equal to the fruit array. And I'm going to grab one of the items. So we'll say index three which is this one right here, mangoes. Now also TypeScript is going to infer the type of F for us as well. And it knows that it's a string because it knows that this is a string array. So no matter what item we get from this array, it knows it's going to be a string. So if I hover over F, we can see it infers that type of string for us, which is awesome. All right, so let me do another example, actually. I'm going to say let things equal to, and then an array. And we're going to put some different types in here. One and then true, and then hello, all right? So we're not explicitly giving this a type and therefore we can put different types of data inside it. Now, when we hover over this, you're gonna see 
let things is any of these types right here. Now we're going to look at these different types later on where it can be one of a number of different types. This is called a union type. However, know that now if we try to get something from this, if I say, for example, const t for a singular thing and set that equal to things and then zero, if I hover over t, then you can see, look, it's going to be one of these three things, but it doesn't know exactly what t is because it doesn't know exactly which one we're grabbing. Yes, we're saying zero, but the order of things might change in the future. Zero might not always be a number or a string or whatever it is currently. So TypeScript basically says, look, it can be one of these types, string, number, or Boolean. Okay then, so now let's move on to objects. How do we type object literals that have specific properties or a kind of specific structure? For example, we might want a variable to be an object, right? That has a name property or a first name property an age property and an ID property. But how do we kind of annotate that as a type? Well, it's kind of long winded, but you basically write out the entire structure of the object itself as the type. So for example, I could make a variable called user and I want that to have a very specific object structure that I just mentioned with a first name an age and an ID. So what I would do is add a colon to specify the type and then the type is going to be an object. So curly braces, first of all, and then inside the curly braces, we say what properties this object must have. And then also the types that the property values must be. So for example, we'd have a property of first name and the type of that must be a string, right? We'd also have a property of age and the type of that would be a number. And then finally, we'd have an ID property, which should have a type of number as well. So Right here, we're saying that the type of this user variable must be an object which has these three properties. And those three properties must have these types assigned to those properties. Now, it doesn't matter what the value of those properties are. They can be anything. Remember, we're just specifying their types here. And the only thing set in stone is the structure of this object, including the types of these properties. So let's give this a value then. So let's set this equal to an object. And we're going to have a first name property, which must be a string. So we'll say Mario. That's fine. Now, currently, look at this. We're getting an error. And it's saying that this type right here, this object that we've currently made right here, and we're assigning to this variable, it doesn't match this type. Well, obviously, it doesn't yet because we've not finished. But that's what this error is for. It's saying that this right here is missing the following properties from type and then this type that we created. And those properties are age and ID. So we're currently missing those two properties. So let's add those on. We'll say that age is going to be 30 and we'll give an ID, which is going to be one. And when I do that, that error goes away because now this object, this value that we've given to this variable matches the type of that variable. Okay. So that's absolutely fine. But watch this. If I try to add on another property like is fictional and set that to be true, then we're going to get an error right here. And that error says that basically this is not defined inside this type. So we're not allowed to use it as the value. So let's get rid of it and we'll just stay with that. All right. So what if we try to change some of the values on the fly of this object? Let's try that. Let's go down here and say user.name and let's try setting it equal to a different type. So it must be a string. So I'm going to say 25. And yeah, we get an error. So it says property name. Oh, it should be first name, not name, first name. And we still get an error. And that error now says type number is not assignable to type string because this must be a string. Let's change it to a string instead. So I'm going to say peach, for example, instead. All right. So what if we try to add on another property? So I could say something like user dot email this time is equal to peach at netninja.dev. And it's not going to let us do that because this email property right here does not exist on this type that we declared up here. So we can't just add on new properties. We've got to stick to this structure after we typed it. So we can't do that. Let's get rid of that. Let's try changing the ID. So let's say user.id and set it equal to two as a string. Yep, not allowed because it must be a number, but we can change it to another number. That's absolutely fine. All right, cool. So now let's move on to type inference with object literals. So much like other types, TypeScript can infer the type of a value when we give it a value 
of an object literal. So let me give a quick example. I'm going to say let person equal to an object, and we're not giving this a type. So we'll say the name is going to be Luigi, like so, and we will say the score is going to be 35. So now if we hover over person, we can see that it's inferred the type, which is this object with a name and a score, and there must be a string and a number. So it's looked at the properties and values here, and it's created the type for us, essentially. It's inferred that type. So now if I come down here and try to say person dot name is equal to true, a Boolean, which is a different type, I can't do that because it's not the same type as this. But I can change it to a different value, which is of the same type, for example, Bowser. That would be fine. I could also change the score. I could say person.score and set it equal to another number. However, if I try to do a different type, it's not going to let me do that. And then if I try to add on, for example, a different property, so I could say person.id that doesn't exist and set it equal to three, it's not going to let me do that because that was not specified initially. It's not part of this type right here. So it's not going to let me do it. All right. So one quick example here, if we try to get one of the properties, I could say const score is equal to person dot score, and it's going to infer the type of score for me inside this variable. So I could hover over here and it says score is a number. It knows that because it inferred this type right here. And whenever we get the score property, it knows it's going to be a number. All right. So that's the basics of arrays and object literals. Next up, we're going to move on to functions.